decoupling New York from the Chinese Communist Party. With the spread of the coronavirus, also known as the CCP virus, across the world, New York has emerged as one of the worst-hit regions. On April 26, 2020, Paul Valley, chairman of Stand Up America U.S. Foundation, published an article on their website titled Decoupling New York from the CCP. The article said, Tragically, New York, the number one city in the world, becomes the epicenter of America. Over the last four decades, New York is also the city being infiltrated the most by the CCP. To conquer enemies, the first priority is to capture the head, states a Chinese proverb. Valley pointed out that New York should decouple from the CCP also suggesting New York should start by removing subversive elements planted by the CCP. Doing so would pave the road to early recovery. The article also said, To counteract the CCP, the priority is to start cleansing the CCP infiltration from New York. Not only will this greatly help New York recover from the pandemic, but also it will set a good model for the rest of the nation, leading the entire nation and the Western countries to a recovery. The sooner these actions could be be implemented, the sooner the recovery will be. On April 16, 2020, the Epic Times published Comparing New York with Hong Kong. Why is Hong Kong so lucky in this pandemic? The article observed that both New York and Hong Kong are world financial centers. New York's population is 8.5 million, while Hong Kong is 7.5 million. Both are tourist centers and attract almost the same number of tourists, which is a whopping 65 million every year from mainland China. New New York, 1.1 million tourists are received every year, while Hong Kong receives a shocking 51 million annually, 46 times that of New York's. Geographically speaking, New York is 7,500 miles from Wuhan, the origin of the pandemic, while Hong Kong is only 570 miles away, which is 13 times closer. Just about every statistic suggests that Hong Kong should be more severely affected by the pandemic than New York was. However, the actual pandemic data is the opposite. As of April 26, New York's confirmed infections was 158,000 versus 1,038 in Hong Kong. New York is 150 times higher. New York's death toll is 12,067, which is 3,000 times higher in comparison to Hong Kong's death toll of only four. As of April 26th, Hong Kong remained open while New York had already implemented shelter in place for over four weeks. What's wrong with New York? The Epic Times published two consecutive editorials on the pandemic revealing the virus targets the CCP and pro-communist elements. It seeks out those of affiliated or aligned to it, be they cities, organizations, or individuals. The American pandemic severity is the direct consequence of its political and business leaders' many years of appeasement and support to the CCP. Outside China, areas hit the hardest by the pandemic are those with close ties to the CCP, who supported the CCP in trade, investments, or helped improve the CCP's international image. Likewise, people who have been standing up for the CCP also find themselves vulnerable to the CCP virus. Valley's article noted, as the world's number one city, New York is the center of the global economy, finance, commerce, and media. New York also has great influence on global politics, education, and entertainment, where the headquarters of the United Nations, WHO, and many other international organizations are located. Through decades of penetration, these organizations are heavily controlled by the CCP. New York City's significance made it the number one target for the CCP's infiltration. Valley cited E.T.'s article through infiltrating New York's economy, finance, commerce, media, culture, education, the Chinese community, and every other field. Not only does the CCP send commercial profits and trade secrets back to China, it also exports its ideology and human rights persecution overseas. At the same time, it is vying for world leadership to stand up to the U.S. as an equal. On April 26, the Epoch Times published an editorial detailing the prescription for the pandemic, staying away from the CCP, and condemning the CCP can help any individual 
organization, or country alleviate or even avoid the CCP pandemic entirely. They may then embrace a wonderful future. Valley's article also points out Wall Street should end this transfusion of capital to China and decouple itself from the CCP. It should move the wealth back to America or elsewhere until the CCP collapses, end children projects and let go of CCP agents within American firms, stop IPOs of Chinese companies until the CCP collapses, and audit Chinese companies listed on the stock market. Not only will these actions greatly accelerate the disintegration of the CCP, but also protect Wall Street itself and New York from the pandemic. Only by ending the collaboration with the CCP can Wall Street welcome a good future. The article points out all forms of the CCP's propaganda in New York should be ended, including billboards in Times Square and around the city, as well as advertorial inserts in American newspapers, broadcasts, or publications by CCTV, China Daily, People Daily, China Global Television Network, and China China Radio International should also be stopped as soon as possible. Valley's article also recommends universities and colleges should stop collaboration with the CCP. The infiltration into America's universities and colleges is an important part of China's overseas propaganda setup. Therefore, all universities and colleges must stop accepting donations from any Chinese companies or organizations. All professors and intellectuals must stop stop collaborating with Chinese universities, institutes, and companies. All Confucius institutes must be immediately shut down. Lastly, the CCP agents on campuses must be dismissed. The CCP's infiltration of U.S. communities should also be stopped. Chinatown communities in Manhattan and Flushing, New York, have been controlled by the CCP for decades. For example, the Chinese American Federation is one of three sub-organizations set up by the China Council for the promotion of peaceful reunification of China, CPPRC, established in New York. CCPRC's goal is to advance the CCP's interest and silence criticism of the emerging superpower. Another example is Miss Li Hua Hong. Li is the leader of a local communist front group in Flushing called the Chinese Anti-Cult World Alliance. Since 2008, Li has been organizing brutal assaults on Falun Gong practitioners. In fact, these associations affiliate with the CCP often disguise themselves as ordinary NGOs. All these NGOs affiliated with the CCP must be disbanded, with the key leaders investigated, said Valley. His final recommendation was the sister city relationship with Beijing should stop. In 1980, New York formed sister cities with Beijing. In 2014, Brooklyn formed a sister city relationship with Chaoyang District of Beijing and the city of Yiwu to further infiltrate New York City's government and communities. New York City should end these sister city relationships with the CCP, especially the one with Beijing, to prevent the city from being further exploited.